Namaskar and good afternoon to all of you friends. It's my honor and delight to be here today with all of you. Uh, my special attention would be to the students at the back. I hope they're not sleeping or in their mobiles, right? So let's wake up, okay? I know it's lunchtime getting closer. So I have a challenge. The biggest challenge I have today, my friends, all the speakers have said what I had to say. I don't know what to say right now. But that's the challenge, you know. So many people here talked about challenge. So my challenge is that they've all spoken about what I had to say there in the slides. So I have a slide of about 12, uh, you know, slides are here. But sometimes I will skip some of them. Sometimes I'll say something new, which are not in the slides. Because many of them have been spoken about. So what to do? Let's begin. One day, a father and a son go to a village. The father thought that they belong to a rich family, the son should know what is poverty. Responsible father, socially conscious, takes him to a village. It was son's vacation, so they had some time. So they spent three days in a village which can be called a poor village, where poor people live. So they lived there for three days and then coming back, the father asked, well, son, how was the trip? Oh, great dad. What did you learn from the trip? And then the son, son starts saying, just listen, everything. Father, I saw that we have one dog. They have four. We have a creek that reaches out to the front yard. They have their fields that go to the horizons. We have lanterns in our gardens in the evening. They have the stars of the night. We buy our food, they grow theirs. We have walls, in our, we love, we have walls, walls around our property to protect us. They have their friends to protect them. The boy's father was speechless. Then the boy said, thanks dad, thanks dad for showing me how poor we are. Friends, what does it mean for us? It's not there in the slides. It means the same reality. One is looking from a stereotype, conventional point of view, like me maybe, people who have come through IITs and IIMs, No, this is poverty and this is affluence. The young boy, fresh mind, green, virgin, sees reality and says it exactly as he sees. This is creativity. See the same reality, but in a different way that gives you new light, new air to breathe, and fresh energy. Creativity. And where does it begin? It begins with questioning. Socrates said, an unexamined life is not worth living. So how do you examine life? Questions. So three questions from the poem, the the Rock by T.S. Eliot, the Nobel Laureate Literature. Where is life we have lost in living? Where is wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is knowledge we have lost in information? So this journey through life, through creativity, towards something, that's something I'll talk about, is a journey through questioning. First you may think it's questioning what is around. Yes, but finally it is questioning what is within me. My assumptions, my beliefs, my values, are they okay now? Are they in consonance with what, is, what are the times around? What we are passing through, are my values matching with that? Do I have to change? Where do I have to change? These questions come. We start these questions. So we'll mainly talk about this art and science of questioning today here. Apart from, I will do a few other things. So, where is life we have lost in living? Where is wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is knowledge we have lost in information? So, we, we are living through turbulent times, friends. And you know, we all know that, especially after the COVID. 
I won't go into details on that. Many people here spoke about, my young friends have spoken about negativity and uh, you know, despair, how to come out of it. But it's converting challenge into lifetime opportunity. From turbulence, we have to move to transformation. And for that, we have to explore our inner space. Because creativity, the source of creativity, is not outside there, but in here. How to explore it? Where is life we have lost in living? We have to find a purpose of life. We have to find meaning in our work, so that this journey is a creative journey, not a mechanical journey, not a monotonous journey. Greece, 2,500 years back. In the marketplace one day, an old man was carrying a lantern, in broad daylight, when people were buying and selling, and he was carrying the lantern and looking at people's faces. A young boy like you goes and asks, Senor, what is it that you're looking for that you can't see in broad daylight with naked eyes? You need a lantern for that. And the old man dangles a lantern in front of the face of the young boy and says, My son, among crowds of people, I'm trying to find a human being. Apparently a contradiction. All the people in the marketplace were human beings. So what is there to look for a human being among human beings? What's the big deal? Yes, it's a big deal. Because you know, in the marketplace, our energy, our consciousness, our focus is inside out. Like when I'm speaking to you right now, my focus of energy is inside out. But when you have to explore the space within, your source of creativity within, the, then energy has to go the other way around. Outside in. Outside in. You have seen two photographs of Swami Vivekananda, which are very common here. Every, everywhere, not only in India, but all over the world. One is that he's standing like this, bursting out in Chicago, inspiring men and women. The other, you go to any outfit of Ramakrishna Mission, including here, where I went yesterday. There's a temple in every outfit. And in that temple, you'll find a photo of Swamiji among other photos of his Gurudev, of his of the Divine Mother. And that photograph is very different, where he's sitting in a particular position and his eyes closed. Where is he looking? Within. Because he can look within, my friends, because I am able to see within and I am exploring myself within, I can harness my energies and come out and conquer the world. 39 years, 5 months, 24 days of his life. Right? Of which nine months, nine years were working life. Still, he created history. Cre creator of the first twin organization in India. First, before the Tatars, please remember. First of May 1897, RK Mission and RK Mutt were created together. Mutt for spiritual pursuit, mission for social service. Together, twin organization. And he was the hero of that. And that organization, after 125 years, with 300 centers all over the world, inspiring men and women, went today. Classical example of enduring and trans sustainable organizations, friends. But what is the background of that? The background is a conversation. Sister Nivedita, disciple of Swami Vivekananda, asked him, you belong to an aristocratic family of North Calcutta, Swamiji. You were a student of philosophy. You were a product of Western education. How come you consecrated, dedicated your entire life to a person who came from the village, who had no formal education, and who was a worshipper of the black goddess? In our modern language, in our HR parlance, there's no, no profile matching between the two, the guru and the shishya, the master and the disciple. So what was the magic mantra of the transformation? Swamiji smiled and gave a one-line one line answer. I felt his wonderful love, full stop. I felt his wonderful love. That is the mantra. L-O-V-E, bold capitals. Not love that we try to possess the other person, but love that liberates the other. Love that reaches out to the other, to everyone without discrimination. That is L-O-V-E, bold capital. When I was studying in IIM Calcutta 35 years back, a wise man in the streets of Calcutta had told me what is learning. I was giving a lecture on learning, learning theories, you know, action learning, experiential learning. He said, hey, hold on, young man. L-E-A-R-N, there are five letters, okay? So what is learning? You're all in a learning institution. What is learning? L-E-A-R-N, five letters. Last four letters, E-A-R-N. First letter is L. After L, he draws a vertical line. 
So in learning you earn, you earn a lot of knowledge, a lot of information. Not enough. It's the L that makes the difference. What is that L? L-O-V-E, bold capitals. If you earn something with love, that is learning. Otherwise, whatever you learn, how much you earn, how much you earn knowledge, information, money, etc., that is earning, sure, but not learning, for sure. Uh, Swamiji's voice was compared by the great no laureate, French Romarola, with the music of another hero of mine, Ludwig van Beethoven. A genius to the core. At a very young age, 25, I think, he came to understand that his auditory organs were impaired. He was unable to hear. And the pain he went through. He ran around the Vienna woods. Where is my inspiration to create music? He could not suffer. You know, you're talking about, you know, uh, challenges, you're talking about difficulties in life. Can you imagine a musical person losing his auditory organ? But he came out of it and gave us some of his best. I'm only give, focusing on the last symphony he made, Ninth Symphony. Why? There's a reason. In Ninth Symphony, there are three mov four movements. First movement, he creates. Second movement, he creates. Third movement, he creates. Fourth movement, he's trying, experimenting. First, he tries with the first movement. No. You can, you can make out from that that he's abandoning that. Then, he starts with the second movement, when he rejects that. Third movement, rejects that. <sighs> silence. Silence. And then from the depth of silence comes the best note of the musical history, the fourth movement, the choral symphony, which is called Ode to Joy, Ode to Joy, right? That silence is very important. Our great seer, Sri Aurobindo, had said, there are two forces in the universe, silence and speech. Silence prepares, speech creates, right? So the Swamiji's photograph in the Archimission temple prepares, eyes closed. Outbursting in Chicago like this creates. Beethoven, Deep within, he's in silence, rejects all the earlier, earlier notes, then comes with the oath to joy. Creativity, my friends, please understand one thing. Unless you find, number one, joy, and number two, freedom, it is anything else but creativity. Creativity has to lead to this. And the third is, I've already said, love. Very important. Uh, I'll skip this. Now I come to Rabindranath Tagore. The most pro you know, prolific, profound, creative genius India has produced in the 20th century, probably. Now, <coughs> what, what, what was his inspiration? There's a beautiful documentary made by Satyajit Ray on Tagore on his 100th year and on his uh, you know, first birth century. There it shows the young Tagore, the young boy, Roby, is sitting in a classroom, and there's a rote learning going on in the class. You cannot see the teacher, but you can hear a gruff voice. Can you see the box? And the whole class shouts, yes, sir, I can see the box. Mindless exercise is going on, and the young boy is sitting there, not participating in what's going on in the class. Why? Because he's looking out of the window, and what's seeing? He's seeing wind blowing, birds flying, water flowing, nature. My friends, Creativity cannot come unless you spend some time with nature every day. I'm being very frank with you. When you are down and out, there's a beautiful song by Beatles. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. I have changed it a little, using my, you know, I am a deep fan of Beatles, so I took their, you know, inspirationally their permission, I said, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Nature comes to me. Mother Nature comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Mother Nature, <coughs> I now split the two words. Mother, <coughs> the most creative person, the most creative person in the universe, Mother. Nine months, ten days or more, little more maybe, she creates, 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 
alive. Isn't that creation? And they have to go through so much of pain and agony to create that. So friends, if you are really looking for a life-transforming, life-giving creation, you have to go through these pains and the agonies. From the agony will come the ecstasy of creation. And the mother is a representative of that. And nature. Mother nature, the nature earth, Mother Earth holds me. When I'm walking down, Mother, Mother Earth holds me. That is why it's called Dharani, Dharitri. She holds me on which I walk. From where, you know, that, that is the origin of the word Dharma. Dhri, the root, Sanskrit root Dhri is <coughs> Dharma. From where you come Dharma, what sustains you. Creativity is important, but not without sustenance. And that sustenance you get from this. So friends, my time is ending, I know. Uh, Principal Sir is here. So a few days before his death, 10 days before Tagore wrote this. The first day's son, not wrote, he dictated while in his deathbed. The first day's son, in the beginning of life, asked a question, who are you? No answer came. Year after year went by, the last day's son, the last question asks, in the western seashore on a silent evening, who are you? No answer came. There was no answer. Friends, from the day one of life till the end of the day, as <coughs> given by our great poet, poet philosopher, creative genius Tagore, keep the questions alive. Keep the lamp burning. And who keeps the lamp burning? Who asks the question? We all have three personalities, the parent, the adult, and the child. Education systems take good care of nurturing the parent and the adult, but unfortunately the child, the child is neglected. The child which is within me, which stands for joy and freedom and creativity, gets neglected. Awaken the child, awaken the child, friends. That's the only way out. A young kid in a <coughs> school, <coughs> school admission system in Calcutta, was asked three-year-old kid in the admission you know, table. Big, heavy-duty people were sitting. Kawa kala ki hota hai? Why is the crow black? And the three-year-old shouts, Madam, uska baap bhi kala hai, maa bhi kali hai. Why I said this? Because it's a child in you which keeps you alive, awake, a fresh green virgin. In mind, I'm saying, not just in body and physically. So keep the child away. <coughs> no, 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 no. Who is God after all? Sri Aurobindo was asked, who is God? What is God? He said, who is God after all? An eternal child playing an eternal game in an eternal garden. An eternal child playing an eternal game in an eternal garden. Thank you very much. Keep the child alive. Keep the flame burning. Thank you.